colored trooper. And uh, Gary, let's uh, have you to uh, talk about uh, uh, your situation when you first became involved with the war itself. Uh, coming out of a, a situation of, I'm not sure whether you were a slave or whatever, but talk about your kind of, your situation. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. I have to start out saluting our ancestors because that's why I sit here today. I remember like it was yesterday, it was a cold day in Nashville. I was a free black man at that time around the 1860s. There was a little over about 1,500 free blacks. And I saw my people as they came into town to do different tasks for their masters. And I couldn't understand why was I so blessed. And I didn't know what to do about that. So I kept on working as a teamster, uh, getting odd jobs for my family to help support. I heard the story about a war starting. I, I didn't know what a war was. Anything hadn't happened mm -hmm. like that before. Mm -hmm. But as I heard the room was going around, they said they were signing black men up. It was some document they called the Emancipation Proclamation, mm -hmm. I believe. And it freed some of our people. I had a choice to make. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Am I going to sit down or am I going to stand up? Mm -hmm. So I decided to stand up. Around Nashville at that time, the talk was about the Union soldiers might be coming to, and mm -hmm. they start marching into town around 1862, and they were building this fort called Fort Negley, I believe. And mm -hmm. I remember it was a Sunday morning. My sister and I were in church. We were getting our praise, thanking God for our freedom. And then the door swung wide open. Mm -hmm. And here come these men in blue suits coming mm. in with guns, taking us all out. <laughs> they marched us to this place they affectionately call St. Cloud Hill. Mm -hmm. Today they call it Fort Negley. Mm -hmm. Well, they for forced us in these work groups. They, they called us contraband, I mm -hmm. believe is the name that they used. They lumped us all together to do tenuous tasks on this fort. Mm -hmm. It took almost six months to build that fort. Mm -hmm. Some of us were strong enough to make it. Mm -hmm. My sister was not. Mm -hmm. And that's what I sang that song for us to my sister when I stand at her grave mm -hmm. because she wasn't strong enough to make it. Mm -hmm. As more men started to fall on the Union side, there was more rumors about signing up for the Union Army. Mm -hmm. So I went to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, mm -hmm. and they were signing up African Americans there. And I signed up on a regiment called the 13th United States Colored Troops mm -hmm. Regiment. They're an infantry regiment. We got our training there at a place they call Fortress Rosecrans. Mm -hmm. We got formal training and our marching and, and, and uh, those duties that revolved mm -hmm. around soldiering. Next thing we knew, we ended up in Nashville on a railroad. Our first assignment, we went to this place called Johnsonville. Mm -hmm. We didn't know if we were going to get to fight. They had us down there guarding railroads, and mm -hmm. we heard about some of these rebs that might be coming through to take our supplies. Mm -hmm. We weren't going to let that happen. Mm -hmm. But we were ready. We'd been marching. We'd been practicing. We'd been praying. Mm -hmm. Well, around about that time, I believe General Nathan Bedford Forrest came through mm -hmm. with some of his raiders mm -hmm. and tried to attack us. But we repelled them back, and we were able to keep forming together. Mm -hmm. As the Battle of Nashville was coming into fruition, it was around December of 1864, came back to Nashville. On the 15th, it was a cold, foggy, inclement day. Our generals, our leaders at that time, 
wanted to march us in formation mm -hmm. early about 6 a.m. try to surprise the Rebs. Mm -hmm. We marched down the Murfreesboro Turnpike. It's this place today they call Granberry's Lunette. Mm -hmm. well, general Granberry was a general who was killed in the Battle of Franklin right before mm -hmm. they got to Nashville. So his men were already angry. Mm -hmm. When he saw those U.S. color troops marching, oh, they were mad. Mm -hmm. Former slaves mm -hmm. wearing uniforms like gentlemen, mm -hmm. carrying guns, they didn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. Well, our leadership led us poorly. We were starting to get ambushed. We jumped in this place called a railroad cut. Mm -hmm. They picked us off like we were in a barrel. Mm -hmm. It was horrific sights. Uh, they used something called canisters. I think today if you used a coffee can, it was full of these bullets they call mini balls, mm -hmm. like I'm holding right here. Mm -hmm. They would just fly out and just rip flesh to shreds. It was a horrific sight. Mm -hmm. But we didn't turn back. The next day, we regrouped. We marched to a place called Peach Orchard Hill. Mm -hmm. It's the home of Judge John Overton at the Traveler's Rest Plantation. I believe we marched into freedom that day. Mm -hmm. As we marched, there were five color bearers, which I am one. That's mm -hmm. the one who has the honor to carry the flag. Mm -hmm. Five of them were killed before I got a chance to get to the top. Mm -hmm. Bullets flying left and right. I was able to wave it as I was at the top, but they later pushed us back. And as we regrouped, we had more support from other regiments. We ultimately mm -hmm. won the Battle of Nashville. Mm -hmm. I think about the words that our great emancipation, mm -hmm. uh, our great emancipator Frederick Douglass said that once let the black man get the letters U.S. Mm -hmm. upon his person, <laughs> let him get mm -hmm. eagle on his bullet, on his buttons, uh, musket on his shoulder, and bullets in his pocket, mm -hmm. and there is no force on earth that can die his, deny his right to citizenship. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what Frederick Douglass said. And of course, uh, uh, let me uh, take this uh, first and second commercial break, and then we'll come back and we'll continue our narrative here. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> 